is up um, welcome to the first tutorial on this channel I guess um, so in this one I'm gonna be going over the ink bleed uh, slash print slash texture effect that I've been getting a lot of demand for um, originally I was going to do uh, how to do ink bleed in five minutes or less but I figured I figured I'd just give you uh, the whole rundown of how to do this uh, and you see this in a lot of my posters on Instagram and uh, elsewhere so uh, I wanted to share a little bit of my secrets um, I've also seen uh, uh, more than a few tutorials on this but um, and they all have their merits but uh, I've been getting some demand for how I do it um, so yeah let's get started so you see that I have a few things set up already I have my document set up um, and I have actually hold on I don't have this set up <laughs> But I'm going to have a little thing in the bottom left corner right here that shows you what keys I'm clicking because I mean I'm assuming that most people watching this have prior experience in Photoshop but um, for those that don't I do use a lot of shortcuts and I might do a thing or two without explicitly stating it so um, if you need to you can look in this bottom left corner uh, but I'll try to try to mention it every time I can uh, what shortcuts I'm using so now to actually get into the effect um, so I have this little design that I made just for this tutorial right here and actually have an invert on it but so this is the design and what we're gonna do with this is first of all simulate uh, ink bleed I'll go to one of the posters on my Instagram so you can see what I mean um, and then we're also going to do a nice photocopy print effect and add some texture on top of that um, yeah so you'll see right here okay so for example right here um, it's not as prevalent in this one but uh, when I zoom in you can see there's there's very rough edges here and it kind of looks like ink bleed and there's also a copy paper and photoco photocopy uh, texture overlay on this um, so that's basically what I'm going to be going over in this tutorial. Uh, first things first, we're going to start with ink bleed. Um, what I usually do for this is, uh, well, first of all, have your design set up uh, once it's done and you want to put all these post processing effects on it. I usually have my design, oops, uh, in one layer. Uh, and, and most of my de designs are one color, but I'm sure this, this will work for multiple. So this is just a uh, black design. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a uh, stroke onto this so that we can um, kind of get rid of the, the hard edges that are on the text um, and also it gives a, a slight illusion of ink bleed so you're going to want to double click I didn't explain this sorry double click the uh, layer that your design is on and it will bring you to the layer style from there you're going to want to go to stroke and make sure the position is on the outside and the color is the color of your design. If your design is multiple colors, you probably um, wouldn't want to do this, but let's say it is uh, all black or all white, then this is a good option that I use. The size really depends on how big your document it is and the DPI of your document. Right now I'm using uh, 16 by 20 at 300 DPI. Uh, this is pretty much what I use for everything. Uh, but mainly I use it for merchandise designs, t-shirt designs, and that's my standard, you know, go-to resolution. Uh, so back to the design, just go ahead and add a stroke, um, outside stroke, anywhere from 1 to 10 works. Uh, I guess you have to fill that out. I'm going to go ahead and use around 2, and that just makes the whole design a little bit thicker. Um, and it's going to help us later on when we do the actual ink bleed. So I'm now going to rasterize this, or I'll duplicate it first. So Command-J to duplicate, just because we don't want to, um, or actually we, we want to keep all our past versions, so we work in a non-destructive manner. Um, and then I'm going to hide that, and then we can merge this or rasterize it. So right-click, rasterize layer style, uh, perfect. So next thing, uh, you want to do is, is kind of get the rough edges in there so my method of going about this is taking your let me rename this taking your design and merging it 
with whatever color your background is. So my background is white. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge it with a white background. But let's say you're working on like white on black, then you're gonna want to merge it with a black background. But for this one, I use white. So go ahead and merge those so that the design is on top uh, of the white layer and there's no transparency anywhere. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a displacement map on this and that's gonna give us some rougher edges along these lines and that'll really help in simulating the ink bleed. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this, Command J um, and hide the original. I'm gonna go to Filter, Distort, Displace and these settings um, I don't really pay much attention to but you can play around with them. 1010 10 usually works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK and choose a displacement map. So I usually use this one that I made a while ago. It's called, well it's a it's basically copy, photocopy texture that's blurred a little bit. Um, I don't even remember where I got it from but I'll probably put it in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and use it on this design. Cool. So now when we zoom in, let me compare this to the original. Um, we have a lot rougher edges on these lines, on the design in general, and that's something that we want to go after. So now that we have that done, um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one, the one that we just displaced, Command J, and go to Filter. This is my little secret. I, I love stamp filter but you're going to want to go to filter filter gallery and stamp stamp is in uh, the sketch folder just go down to stamp and it's there so the main uh, slider we're going to be focusing on is smoothness um, you can you can mess around with the light and dark balance this kind of depends on your design uh, usually you're going to want to keep it either really low or really high but smoothness is generally what you want to focus on uh, basically what that does is imagine you blurring um, the design. So it kind of, I don't know, there's not really a good way to describe this, but you can see that it smooths out the edges. Um, let's, I'm going to go all the way back to zero or one. Uh, it definitely smooths out the edges. And it also conjoins um, values of of black or, or white that's really close together. So you see when I zoom in on this text, the tracking is really close, so the letters are all uh, really close to each other, and when I turn the smoothness up, you'll see they kind of blend into each other. Um, and that's a big thing in simulating the uh, ink bleed. So I'm going to go ahead and use around 7, 7 to 10. Uh, you can play around with, it, around with this though, it's, it's not universal. Uh, it's 7 I think looks good for this one so I'm going to go ahead and render that okay so now uh, pretty quickly that's that's the whole that's what I use pretty much for everything that I make to get just a nice little subtle ink bleed um, and let's compare this to the original if I zoom in you do get a little bit of that effect in there okay so now I'm going to add a few textures on top of this to really sell that effect. Okay, right here, Iconoclast Book Club. I really went kind of uh, wild on this one with the photocopy texture, uh, but if you like it, uh, we're going to kind of recreate this more sub subtly, but um, you'll be able to do this more extreme if, if you want to. So if I zoom in here, you can see there's or at least compared to the, the black values on this design. These are a lot lighter. It's like you scanned it with the old Xerox printer, um, old Xerox machine, wherever those things are. Um, and there's also some subtle, darker edges uh, everywhere around the design. So we're gonna go ahead and, and we create that. Okay, so back on our design, actually back to Chrome. You're gonna wanna find yourself a nice photocopy texture um, so uh, main sources, if you want free ones, I usually use Indie, I think it's called Indie Ground. You can just search up Indie Ground photocopy texture, or there's also a really, really nice site called 
texture fabric right here. So texture fabric, just search up texture fabric, uh, photocopy textures. Yeah, these are my favorite, I love these. Uh, but we'll look around. Let's see what see what's best. Um, I used to use this one a lot. Uh, for this one, I think, yeah, I'll go with this. This one's kind of pretty. Um, but this site also has very nice textures and you can download them, which I'm not gonna do right now, but uh, you get the point. I actually have one saved, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I have this one saved, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that in my document. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, Indie Ground Photocopy Texture. So I'm gonna use this one. Scale it up to size. Perfect. All right. So once you have your photocopy texture in there, um, what I do um, is first of all duplicate the photocopy texture and hide the layer on top. Um, go to the bottom one and set the blend mode. Actually, no. First, Command I on the bottom one, and this will invert the image. Um, so if your photocopy texture is, is mostly black like this one um, inverting it is going to get it I mean you know inverted it's going to change the black values to white so that um, is going to affect basically the background of this image or all the white values so go ahead and set the inverted photocopy texture the blending mode to lighten I mean darken my bad to darken and that's going to affect all the white values in this design um, I'm going to turn the opacity down on this because it's a bit extreme. So maybe 50% is fine. Uh, but then the really important one is the one on top. So go ahead and, and show that layer and change the blending mode to lighten. Okay, perfect. So now we have um, a pretty consistent photocopy texture around uh, along the entire design, the entire document. And if you really want to go into gritty details, something you could do is take your design that's make sure it's still merged um, with, with its background. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that and do the same exact displacement just so we can get more um, rough edges that we kind of lost when we use the stamp filter. So, displacement, copy displacement nice so it's a really subtle difference but if you want to do that that's up to you so uh, actually I want to mention um, an alternative that I use to displacement sometimes it's really nice it's called crystallize so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and I'll show you what that looks like so for, for this filter you also have to have the background merged with the, with the design and um, once you have that, you're going to want to go to Filter, Pixelate, and Crystallize. And if you zoom in, actually I don't know if you can see it uh, anywhere else but the preview here. But you're going to want to use a cell size of around 3 to 10. I'm going to go pretty low on this one because I want the effect to be more subtle, but you can play around with this. I think I'm going to use 4. Okay, perfect. And now if I zoom in, you can see we get really rough edges here. And if I compare that to the original, um, big, big difference. So now I'm going to, this is kind of an extra effect. This is probably what you're after. Um, it's just what I, what I just explained. But if you want to take the, the step further and get kind of these um, darker edges around uh, the, the black spots or whatever in the design, uh, this is the technique I use to go about that. So, you're going to want to take your design and duplicate it. Make sure it still has the background merged with it. Um, and then bring that on top of all of both the photocopy texture layers. Um, and now, go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and we're going to use Photocopy, which is also in the sketch folder. So we'll see instantly what this does is it kind of creates an outline or a feathered outline of 
of all the black values we have in this design. You can play with the settings. Um, but yeah, really, it's it's up to you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and play with this and see what looks best. So I ended up using um, whatever settings. <laughs> uh, you'd have to play around with it for your specific design. But generally, this is um, what, it, what it'll end up looking like. And once you have this, set the blending mode of this layer to um, multiply or darken. Either works, kind of. I'm going to use darken for this one. Um, and you'll see that if we zoom in, we do have those darker edges. I and mean, we can also turn the opacity down uh, so it gives it a more subtle effect. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And if you want to, this one's pretty light. I think that was just the texture I used, but if you want to simulate that, um, just go to the, the darker photocopy texture layer and go to image, adjustments, levels, and just turn um, the gray values up this way. And that'll do it. You can also just play around with these other levels. I like to do that sometimes. Um, so yeah, that gives a nice effect. Right, so I'm gonna turn the opacity down on this actually, because it's a bit too harsh. We can actually we can blur it as well if if you want to kind of get rid of these harsh lines. Um, then your best bet is pro probably to blur it, but. Again, this is going into like the nitty gritty details, so it's not really required. I'm going to use around 4 point blur and set the opacity back up. And there we have it. So if you zoom in, actually, I don't like that. I'll turn the opacity down. But if we zoom in, uh, we see we do have the, um, the photocopy Xerox effect um, around all the black uh, in this design and as a whole it does look as if it were scanned or something like that um, and then the displacement and rough edges really sell it and so overall I think it's a pretty nice uh, effect to add to whatever posters you're making or whatever designs you're making um, so yeah okay so that's really all that it is um, I just wanted to make it quick tutorial on this but again I wanted to show how I do it and really how, how easy it is and I use this on pretty much everything so yeah um, that's it and I'll see you in the next video peace